Meneer Hanni, mijn god, ik heb dat je nog niet gehad. Meneer Sosje, ik zag dat. En zo hoorde ik, ik heb dat niet heel goed gehad. Maar goed, Meneer Nat gaat gehad, en dan ontkip ik dat gehad. Toen wij op een reëkje gaan, dan praat ik dat. Meneer Nat, meneer Dank, ik heb dat gehad. At one time, all of this land was ours, but all the timber area along the Missouri River we cherished. We understand that there is going to be a, a, a dam who will take some of this away from us. Beside that, there's be about 80 some families who will move out of the bottom area and going up on the bottom, bottom top of the rise due to the flooding of the Fort Randall Reservoir. After my first discharge, my discharge from the military in 1946, I became the tribal leader of this, and Fort Thompson was a beautiful location. And the reason for that, all of the agency, the Bureau employees reside in, in, in the square. And uh, there were stores, two stores. There was the LaCroix and then there was um, Went store were there, and um, I started working for the, uh, the government as as a uh, groundskeeper, I guess, uh, and uh, we we did everything. But then I have, at the same time, I was the first tribal chairman, and um, the difficulty was the the government. The, the Corps of Engineers and the Bureau of Indian Affairs went before Congress to tell them that um, what the Pick Sloan plan was to do was to inundate thousands of acres of Indian lands. But they never told the Bureau of Indian Affairs or never told the tribe that this was going to be done. So when I came into the, as a tribal leader, that was one of my first big jobs that I encountered, was to go before Congress for four years in a row to try to get the just compensation for the people and for the people who lost their homes at the bottom land. And, uh, and in so doing also, the, the tribe did not have a, a constitution and bylaws. The Indian Re Reorganization Act of 1934 uh, helped the tribes to form their, their constitution and bylaws and they, getting a form of government on a reservation. But the Crow Creek tribe did not accept the Wheeler-Howard Act. And therefore, it was about 10 years afterward, my job was to go before Congress to get a, an administrative uh, authority to form the government on, on this the Crow Creek Reservation. So if you look in the Constitution and bylaws, the old copy, you'll see that I am the tribal chairman and uh, of course, there's been a lot of amendments in the in the years between, so uh, things are not going like it should. And uh, but as it's uh, there's been a drastic change on the reservation, and that's why I encourage young people to get all the education they can, because. I went to Dakota Wesleyan University as a tribal leader and um, I got to go back a little bit because when I came back I had my mother to take care of. So I had to make a living so I went into cattle ranching and the government helped me to get started and that'll be a few miles north of the Christ Church the Episcopal Cemetery, I'll point it out to you as we go driving on there. And um, that I had to do, so, uh, but um, it, was, it was tough. It was tough work. But at the same time, my, the administrative also of the Bureau of Indian Affairs said, uh, you should, you should go, go take advantage of your GI Bill because the GI Bill is going to uh, end in the coming July. So, um, so that was when um, I, I said, well, I've got to sell my cattle and uh, get prepared. So that was in the fall of, of 50, well, 49, I guess, yeah. No, no, it's 50. 
and um, they helped me. The government really helped me to, to arrange these things. And uh, then I sold the cattle out, and then I was invited to go to Dakota Western. I didn't have a car, so my, my friend and neighbor said, you could take my car and go to the college. So I did, and I went to, went to Dakota Westland, looked that over, and decided it was a good place, and I, I, I uh, agreed to enroll there. And so, but I went three years, summers and all, and got my degree, bachelor, my BA degree, and um, I think it was the best thing I ever done in my life, was to get that college education, because as I told the people at the first meeting uh, about four or five years ago that I said I've held some of the best best jobs in, in, in the Dakotas because um, I worked for the Bureau of Internet Affairs on Standing Rock and then I worked for the three governors of South Dakota and, uh, and then as a tribal leader doing all these things for the tribe. It, I, this wouldn't be possible if I didn't have the college education. So I encourage the uh, young people to go on to school, go on and get the best education you can. Now my children typify what I am saying. My oldest son is the, one of the top Bureau of Indian Affairs employees at Phoenix, Arizona. And then I got another son at Albuquerque who is an architect. And um, then I got another son at Lincoln, Nebraska, who is a police officer. He's ready to retire, but he's too young to retire. And um, in fact, he's going to call me when I get home. He's, he, he, was, he tried to call us when we was at the cafe in Champ Pier before we left today. But, um, and my daughters have master's degrees. Jana, which, who is fully handicapped, is probably better qualified than a lot of our social workers. She has a micro uh, sociology degree from University of Nebraska, and Mary has a, a almost finished her master's degree out of Wichita, Kansas. So they're well educated, and uh, they're making their own way. And my son Joe, of course, he's a, a college graduate. He's working on his master's. And he's a principal of the high school of the Crow Creek. And uh, I think that typifies what I stress to young people today. And um, with that, I hope that I've given, you, given them a message that they can take and tell their children. Thank you.